Hey everybody, I'm Melissa Joyner and today we're at the Boathouse in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And this series will be plugging you into the music scene along the Grand Strand. Today we have Sweet Sweet, their local favorite, and they're going to play one of their original songs for you. But make sure you stick around because we're going to get to know them a little bit better. These roads sign are an invasion of my privacy Don't tell me where I'm going Don't tell me where I've been I got a little morning And no street lights to stop me I'm getting where I'm going I'll tell you where I've been So much for coming here to play for us today. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, I've had such a great time doing all these shows this whole week and it's just so much fun to hear the stories behind the song. So I was wondering if you could tell me what is your song that you played about and tell them one more time what the name of it was. And the song's called Heden um, and Corinne wrote the lyrics for that for the most part. So um, I'll let her field that question. What's the song about? <laughs> mm. Or what inspired the song? Just people telling you what to do, and mm. I was tired of it. And it's pretty much a song just saying like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting where I'm going, and you can't tell me where I'm going, I'm gonna tell you where I'm going. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I remember the first time I heard that song and I loved it and specifically the line, these road signs are an invasion of my privacy. I felt so seen because I've had all those late night drives from gigs where I'm just reading these signs. I'm just like, you can't tell me where to go or how I'm feeling. And so I really love that line. Thanks. Me too. <laughs> what is some of your influences that you guys use to pull for your writing? Is it listening to other people? Is it life events? Like where do you get your inspiration for your songs from? I do both. Um, I, I like to write from my perspective, sometimes if I have something to write about, but um, if I'm feeling creative and I don't have something really that I'm passionate about speaking about that's personal, um, I don't want to stop from writing, so I'll mm -hmm. try to pull from something else. Uh, so usually maybe friends' lives, from my perspective, how, how I see their situation happening. Um, sometimes even like a, just a made-up story, characters. So I'm always interested to meet people who play different instruments besides guitar and piano. So when you're writing songs, Corinne, do you have the lyrics first? Because with you playing cello, do you hear like melody lines on your instrument? Like how does that work for you? That's typically how I do it. Um, the, the melody has to be there first and then I'll, I'll work around mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Typically, the melody has to be there first for almost everything. Like we won't, we usually write lyrics after melody. Oh, really? But <laughs> "Heat" in the song we played was written the lyrics first. Oh, cool. So yeah, that was different for us, and it was a cool exercise. Awesome. Well, let's mix it up a little bit here and just play a game for a second. If you could have a fantasy show anywhere in the world with anyone Ooh. on stage with you, where would you play and who would you play with? <laughs> Red Rocks. Yeah. Gregory Allen Isakoff. I almost knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I, was, I was like, am I a psychic? So, I just I, I talk about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of agree. Like, we, uh, um, you know, there's so many artists I love from history, but like, uh, Gregory Allen Isakoff is is what we've been relating to most recently. And like, the idea that he plays with a full symphony mm. um, is just something that we've aspired to do and I, I don't know I just feel like it would work with our songs um, and I would do that I'd join his band <laughs> that's actually a perfect example of why I think it's so good to have friends that are musicians because the specific artists that you just referred to I didn't know who they were until meeting you guys mm -hmm. so I feel like it's like a gift that keeps on giving so definitely go make more friends with musicians so they can like tell you who to listen to <laughs> well speaking of other music or your own music, has there been a lyric that has just stuck with you for a long time? It can be a song that you've written or a line that you've heard from a song from another artist that has just haunted you maybe in a good way even. Mm. Yes. <laughs> what it's is a, it? It's a, it's a Gregory lyric and it's, um, uh, hope was a letter I never could send and love was a country I couldn't defend. <sighs> I wish I wrote that. I don't. Every time I hear it, it just it melts me. I, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> I, yeah. I love those singers. Feeling. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sit with you for a while. Like just just stew on it. You're like oh. sit in the hurt or the inspiration. <laughs> you're like, oh, I wish I wrote that for sure, for sure. Yeah. How long have you guys been in the music scene here in the Grand Strand? Hmm. A sweet, sweet. It's been six years. Um, Officially, yeah, I guess. And I was in a band, the first band I was ever in, I was 19, and it was uh, Grace Cathedral Park. Oh, cool. Um, awesome experience, great guys. Is, uh, yeah. But, you know. I've been playing in this area for uh, almost 20 years now. Okay. Um, different projects, but yeah, the Sweet Sweet has been, I think it was 2004. Four, or 14, I'm sorry, yeah. that we officially kind of, and it wasn't really until about 2015 that we started recording and getting out there. Like oh. the first year was sort of just putting it together. What would you say is your favorite thing about this music scene here specifically? The musicians. Yeah. Like, I mean, was, everybody's so cool and we just support each other and a lot of support. have a lot of fun together. Yeah, and, there's not mm -hmm. that um, um, sort of competitiveness that you find in a lot of other um, scenes. Um, I'm not sure what it, what, why it turned into that way, but yeah, everybody seems very, it's almost like a big family. 
I think especially for those of you who've watched along with us as we've had all these episodes, you would realize that it's a, a community. And I think the reason that it is so special here is because every single musician pours back into it. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be different genres and different types of music, but it's like a communion that we all share. Everybody comes to the same table and sits down and we spend time together. So that is, I find, what is unique about this scene, different than some other scenes that I've been to. So is there any advice that you would give to someone who wanted to come to the scene for the first time here or any music scene starting out? What is there, what do you wish you knew when you first started playing music? Um, I don't know. I think I'm like, as I've been here longer, I'm, I'm more particular about who I actually make music with. Mm. Um, I think when you first get into a scene, you're, you try to get out like you might go to some open mics or you know and you try to meet whoever you can to get things you know and and but it's, it takes a while to really find out who works with you best mm -hmm. and sometimes some of my earlier stuff I, I just whoever was willing I'm like <laughs> oh you play the bass so you're, yeah. you're my band <laughs> yeah. and now it's uh, it's more of uh, what exactly what taste you want and mm -hmm. there's so many people uh, there's so many musicians here that you can find find the right person maybe you know, take take the right time, take the time to, to you know, put it together right. Yeah. And this question actually goes to both of you. Is there a song that you wish you could go back in time and steal it and put your name on it and say that you wrote it? <laughs> Which song do you wish that you could say you wrote? I suppose anything from the Beatles. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like all of them? Uh, yesterday, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I would say anything Beatles. Uh, there's some Pink Floyd songs that I wish I had written. Um, just the classic stuff, not so much modern stuff. Um, the modern stuff, I kind of, I feel like I, I'm like I could have written that. Mm. But then, like the really, just the, the you know the classic stuff, I'm just like, I wish I'd written that. Yeah. Right. I wish I had been I, born back then, so I could have written yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wish I was that good. You know. <laughs> Me too. Well, guys, if you could watch this a year from now, and if you were to look into that camera and tell yourself something, what would you say to yourself a year from now? Year from now, <laughs> friends like I'm gonna watch this. Don't, I need this to be, be good. Don't be so scared all the time. <laughs> Drink more water. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think we could all use that advice. Actually, <laughs> oh, I love that. So, Corinne, I know I've talked to you a little bit about you finding the cello in school and you just wanted that but I was wondering if you could tell everybody kind of how you guys got into music or specifically when did music choose you because I don't feel like we ever really have a choice when it chooses you. It's definitely younger. Um, I wouldn't say I was super into it like mm -hmm. when I first started playing the cello um, and it probably wasn't until my high school years that I I started like feeling the music mm -hmm. and then I'd find myself learning different parts from different songs on my cello and <laughs> the, you know would never doing that before and I'm like yeah I think this is a thing I want to do for <laughs> ever <laughs> forever <laughs> forever ever what about you Jeremy um yeah I, I kind of started the same way I think um a lot of my family played uh, guitar and, and played music and so it was always around me I think it was just kind of looming that I was going to uh, eventually pick it up and when I did pick it up at first I, I don't think I uh, necessarily fell in love with it but I was in love with the idea of you know listening to all these records and stuff and like grunge was hitting so I was like super just like I want to I think I want to be a rock star <laughs> but who doesn't want to do that but it wasn't until um, I was actually uh, going to go to art school and I had different plans um, but as throughout high school I, I got more into um, music and I started really writing more songs with it and actually leaning on it as a, a part of my identity so I, I eventually scrapped that idea and I said no this is actually what I really want to do and then I would say in my early 20s I realized I, I, I have to do this. I can't mm. not do it. Not it's a like choice I, anymore. Yeah, it's not even a choice. It's like, no matter what I do for work, um, in odd jobs, I in different types of things I did back then, like I always, I can't wait to get off work so I can, so I can play music. And so, mm. no matter what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I just succumb to it. I'm like, all right, you got me. 
It's funny how that works. My duo partner, Mark, tells me that every single time he's tried to quit playing music, that something drags him back in. So it's cute when we think we have a choice, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, this year has been crazy. Mm. I won't sugarcoat it. We all know it's been crazy. Where have you found inspiration? For us, it's been stranded here, meeting friends like you guys. And just like you said earlier with the community, like that's been huge for us. But I was wondering for you guys, what inspires you lately, musical or not? I think downtime, like the, when, when we, because things slowed down so much and it gave mm -hmm. us extra time, like you find things, yeah, you find yourself doing things that you might not have mm -hmm. had time for before, like I was gonna say painting. <laughs> yeah, we've and, been painting like, a lot. Uh, and um, well, even then, like just having more time to craft music. Mm -hmm. And so we've been recording and writing, and um, there was something beautiful about everything kind of shutting down and slowing down that I found that I found um, to be inspiring. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The hustle bustle of everything kind of coats, uh, it takes away the beauty of some things that you don't get to notice sometimes. I, I don't know. I liked it. Okay. I, I think we all needed to slow down a little bit. Oh, absolutely. As much as I, you know, it definitely affected our, you know, our lifestyle and our, our music and kind of halted all of our plans. But you just make new plans. Yeah. Go with that. Sometimes greatness comes out of making those new plans too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Is there anything for you, Corinne, that has inspired you lately? Or is it like the painting and hanging out thing for you as well? Yeah, definitely painting and, and hanging out with our friends and um, just getting together and randomly making music and uh, yeah. Yeah, stuff we didn't have time for before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Filming we had, videos. We all had shows, and, yeah. so we couldn't hang out as much. Absolutely. So. Yeah. All right, well, last question, and then we'll conclude this. If you could only hear one sound again for the rest of your <laughs> life, what would you pick and why? And I understand if you say it's not my voice. Oh. <laughs> I would uh, say the ocean. Mm. Oh, wow, yeah? Just, yeah, coming into the shore and back and forth. I, I can't, I, I, this just never gets old to me. Mm. Puts me in a state, sort of state of relaxation. I would say my heartbeat. That means I would live forever, right? <laughs> you just took that to a whole new level. We're like, oh, Whoa. can I change mine? Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I'm going to redo. <laughs> no, that's good. Well, guys, thank y'all so much for coming here and sharing not only your songs, but the stories behind them. You guys are true artists in every sense of the word, and it's so great to share this space with you guys. And if you guys are loving this as much as we are putting it together, please make sure you tune in every Friday. There'll be videos just like these. You'll get the stories, the songs, and the funny moments. You'll realize that you should change your answer from the ocean to the heartbeat as well. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. These roads are an invasion of my privacy. Don't tell me where I'm going. Don't tell me where I've been. Yeah.